Bill Bengen, the inventor of the 4% rule, has revised it. This is good. And uh, I must have received this at least 10 times <laughs> from you guys. So I appreciate it. This, I, man, I appreciate you guys being my eyes and ears out there. I really, really do. And if I see a story that comes multiple times from you all, I know it's uh, that's something. Let me get my coffee. I know it's something of big importance for you, which means it's a big importance for my audience, I guarantee. So let's dive into this. This is from Market Watch. It's actually interesting because I read the, uh, the article for which this guy talks about in Financial Advisor Magazine. I get it. And uh, it was interesting because um, it was actually an incredibly boring article. Let me make some. Uh, it was uh, it was incredibly boring. He talks with Safe Max, and uh, it was just I, I was like my eyes were glazing over. It. And um, uh, <laughs> but I was glad my man Brett here, uh, who had written this article, we're gonna read, um, had actually called Bill to talk about it because that article from which this whole story is derived. Oh my goodness! It was just like I it was it wasn't uh, it it made my head spin. Uh, so let's read about Brett, because um, Brett did interview Bill Bangin, which I thought was pretty cool. He, uh, he's he been uh, received individual award from Society of American Business. He's a pot, he used to uh, financial writing with the Boston Herald, analyst at McKinsey. Oh, boy. Uh, he is, a, but he's a Charles financial consultant. Good. All right. So that's good. So he actually is in the business, not just a, uh, a young lady from Syracuse University. Let's just put it that way. So I, I like to, that's good. So he has some experience in the business. All right. Uh, Bill Bangin now says the iconic, or says the now iconic rule was always treated too simplistically. Um, is that, who is this right there? What, is that a picture of Bangin? All right. Okay. Reasons to be cheerful. The 4% rule just changed. I, I don't know. I'm not, what, who is that right there? I don't know. Um, I agree. I completely agree. I feel bad for Bill Bangin having to feel like the, the fun, the, the fun, <laughs> To find the police to defend the rule because I think is it, it played a huge role, and, and this is why you know people say I challenge the four percent rule. I don't challenge it. I challenge the basis that had means anything because it doesn't if you have declining in, in income or income needs as you age. What I do love about it is it challenged the premise before of linear rates of return. I cannot tell you how many people in the business said. Dave Ramsey still, I don't know if he still does it, but I mean, I just, I can't listen to Dave if it, I, I just, I can't because it's so elementary to say the mark has given you 10% a year, thus you can take 8% a year safely. That's just, it's insane. You can't do that, man. Or 8% a year, the initial, then you know, basically the, the premise was, the lady said she had a million bucks and Dave said you could take uh, uh, 70,000 a year adjusted for inflation. Uh, it's just, it's nuts, nuts. Anyway, because the market gives you 10, you can only take a seven. So you always be ahead of the game. It's just, you can't do that. That's the way the, it was for a long time, up until about the mid 2000s. So bang, banging. There you go. So banging had written as the uh, article in Financial Planning Association magazine, the Journal for Financial Planning, excuse me, in 1994. It didn't take until about the mid 2000s where people recognized the linear. We're going to get 10% a year off, so we should be safe as long as we're dread, uh, drawing less than 10% a year off our portfolio. It's silly. you got to use the Monte Carlo. And that's essentially what Bill Bengen did. He allowed us to look at the market as a volatile endeavor. And you cannot look at it as a linear. Well, I thought you just wanted to go out. All right, so let's read what he says here. All right, come on. Up beat. Come on. All right, so uh, it's been more than 25 years since uh, Bengen, the financial advisor of Southern California, created the 4% rule. I remember too what happened after he uh, he did this a uh, Trinity study out of South uh, San Antonio. Uh, they elaborated on it a little bit more academically, which is, I, I could care less. But they elaborated and they said no, they confirmed the four percent rule. I think they went to like four and a quarter, four point four percent. But you know, Bill Bing is a financial advisor, so until the academics bless it, uh, we didn't, no one really paid much mind. The Trinity study is kind of what took off actually more so than Bill Bing. That's the principle. If you want to make sure your retirement savings last at least as long as you do, you should spend no more than 4% of the balance in the first year and then adjust the amount each year with inflate of inflation. Uh, Bangin called his rule the safe max, the maximum amount you could withdraw each year and still stay safe. Since his article appeared in the JFP, the Journal for Financial Planning, the 4% rule has suffered the fate usually reserved for religious doctrines. 
alternately, alternately cited as revealed truth, such as here, fidelity, here, Schwab, or denounces hearsay. I read that. It didn't really denounce his hearsay. Uh, into various forms of reformation, such as here and then here, um, but still is persistent and spread as pretty useful rule of thumb. In fact, I talked about this in my book, 4% rule. So, all right, so Mr. Smith says, hey, how much can I pull from my year, portfolio each and every year and never worry about running out of money? 4%. Okay, simple. If you want to make sure you don't outlive your savings, goes modern financial advice, uh, budget on withdrawing no more than 4% of your portfolio in the first years and then only adjust upward in line with inflation. When out comes news that Bengen, who has updated his numbers, no one, not only is he no longer sticking to 4%, he said that number is always treated too simplistically. He said it was historically just the worst case scenario. Exactly. That is based on someone who retired at the worst moment he could find in modern times, October 1968, just as the stock market peaked and runaway inflation was beginning. Someone who retired at that moment had to endure a bear market for stocks that would last 14 years, from 68 to 1982. And skyrocketing inflation crushed the purchasing power of their savings and fed their bonds into a shredder. Hmm, it's almost like someone had written a book about this called Retire with the Wellington Fund. Someone retiring then would have been okay for 30 years if they withdrew no more than 4%. But he has, at other points in history, when inflation was low and stocks and bonds were cheap, a new retiree could have withdrawn much more and done okay. Historically, he says the average safe withdrawal rate has turned out to be about 7%, and at points has reached as high to 13%. Of course, retirees who are, at that fortune, who are that fortunate would not have known that until later. Exactly. His calculations, incidentally, are all based on a conservative retirement portfolio where you keep 30% of your money in the S&P 500, 20% in small cap stocks, and 50% in intermediate U.S. government bonds. Uh, over a decade ago, his calculations were adapted by Michael Kitsis to take account of the level of the stock market. Kitsis used data from uh, Robert Schiller to work out when the stock market was cheap and retirees could bank on good future returns. And when it was expensive, and retirees needed a budget for meager gains. The cheaper the market, the better your expected future returns. The more you can withdraw, said Kitsis. Bengen said, yeah, right here, this month of the Financial Advisor magazine, Kitsis' calculation is the single most important chart ever devised pertaining to sustainable withdrawals. And I, I don't agree with that at all. I, I, mean, I don't agree with that all because we're relying on the Schiller stuff. And the Schiller stuff says the stocks are expensive, but are they expensive relative to the bonds? No, they're not. They're expensive relative to historical P.E. ratios, but relative to the bonds are not. Bengen says that based on current, I, I actually, I, I don't, I, I, this is where I wish my man uh, Ty Bernicke uh, would get more street cred. That guy, Bengen in the 90s, changed the thing from linear rates of return into more volatility with standard deviations. Uh, Bernicke in the 2000s was the beginning beginning of the showing that the inflate that you don't need to spend adjust with inflation each every year upwards because people just don't do that. There was a couple of professors before Bernicke who decided who did, ran the same stuff in the early late 90s. I forgot their names. Bernicke is the one who, uh, uh, at least for my area, put it in the modern era of financial planning knowledge because he had written in the Journal for Financial Planning back in 2004, I think. That changed everything. Now that the professors had written in 1998, 1999, I think that was what kind of captivated Bernicke. But at least for me, I never heard about that, that you spend less as you age until Bernicke. And then it, it just it was like, for me, it was a freaking light bulb going off. I said, let me look into this. And I said, man, he's right. He's right. And it, forever now we've changed. So instead of having the safe max of 4% or linear rates of return, um, so instead of getting away from linear rates of return to a a 4% rule with you know, the safe max using volatile markets. Uh, that was from 1980, 1990, 2000 with Bernicke, where he said, look, people's spending actually goes down as you age. And that is now the uh, the gold standard in, in financial planning to assume that your spending does not go up as you age, but it goes down. Now, everyone in their mind throws in, but what about health care? And we're not talking um, long-term care. Well, again, that those days are behind getting behind us now because of uh, work. Uh, done by EBRI, Employee Benefits Research Institute. Uh, I'm drawing a blank to do his name, but I'm uh, ah, connected to him on LinkedIn too. But anyway, and I've written about that in my book, uh, Social Security, right here. So now we're seeing that the vast majority of us don't spend significant amounts on long-term care, if anything at all. 
Um, all right, so let's keep going. So what's the rule now? Bengen says the current withdrawal, uh, based on the current environment, he thinks new retirees should be saved for the starting amount of 5%. That's what I use myself, says Bengen. Okay, so it's not as earth-shattering change from 4%. It's even less of a change from the updated 45 but the new rule is now 5 if you like. That puts Bengen at odds with those things whose numbers should be less than 4 because of today's record stock and bond prices. The average is 7 Four and a half percent is pretty grim. Four and a half percent is the worst case scenario. He agrees that stocks and bonds all look expensive by historical standards. Stocks don't have much in the way of prospective return. All financial assets have low prospective returns. But here he says one savings grace, very low inflation. Could not agree more. It was inflation more than the bear markets and stocks and bonds that really crushed retirees in the 70s. Huh. Huh. Who said that? This guy. This guy. Inflation is worse for retirees than bear markets because bear markets eventually end and stocks and bonds recover. Higher prices once they arrive never go back to where they were. When you get inflation, it's locked in. You're stuck with higher prices for 30 years. I could not agree. Man, Bill Wright... Bravo, sir. Bravo, good sir. As Tim Poole says, bravo. That I could not agree more. It's inflation more than bear markets that really crushed retirees in the 70s. I could not agree more. Today, I think the worst case scenario would incorporate a renewed bout of inflation. That A, re a worst case scenario. What does uh, he thinks uh, the Federal Reserve's boost, uh, boost inflation? It's amazing to me, says Bengen. There are plenty of unknowns. We don't know if the, plan, uh, the Fed can prevent deflation, let alone get prices higher. We don't know what the COVID is going to do to long-term returns. We also don't know, for example, whether inflation-protected bonds would work better than regular government bonds. Although tips are designed to adjust their prices to reflect the CPI, they weren't around in the 70s. So we don't know what they would have done. Oh, and right now they're so expensive, they actually guarantee a small but significant loss of purchasing power. Bengen, a former, a former aeronautics engineer, warns that finance is not a natural science. Again, bravo, good sir, bravo. The 5% rule, like the 4% rule, should not be treated like Newton's law of physics. So put your freaking evidence-based advising, just put it out to pastor. It's stupid. It's not a law of nature. It's empirical. I, it can be, we've observed it. In other words, based solely on the data we have going back to the 1920s, one size does not fit all. And the number you choose could be anything. I, man, I tell you what, I could not agree more. Does that look like Alicia Monell right there? Alicia Monell from uh, CRCC, uh, Boston College Center for Retirement Research. Uh, I could not agree more. So let's see uh, what kind of comments we have in here. Um, I'm living well on 4% plus Social Security. My retirement accounts are 50% equities. I also have, uh, my wife is waiting until Sunday to take her Social Security, at which point she'll have more monthly income than me. Uh, you can't right here. You can also, you know, can't. Uh, you can, your wife can also collect 50% of Social Security if she's 62 years old with a reduction. No, she have to be born in 19, uh, before 1954. So today is 2020, 1954. She'd have to be 66 right now. Can't do that here. It's a little extra bonus. Nope. Uh, no, no, no. Those days are over. Right, let me just type that in here. Uh, those days. Can I, can, do I have to, can I type this in here? Or what? No, maybe I can't. All right. So uh, that, you, this guy's wrong. Those days are gone. Um, Social Security, the uh, act of 2015. All right. So uh, these are mostly just stock guys, uh, aristocrats, all that. That's that's fine. Um, okay, I can't type stuff in there. That's weird. Do I have to log in? Um, oh, yeah, I can. All right. So how do I respond to somebody here? Reply. All right. So anyway, there you go. Um, hope this helps. Good article, guys. And uh, I'm hey man. Kudos to Bill Bangin. Good guy. Again, I always bash the 4% rule. I don't bash Bill Bangin at all. I just bash the rule because everyone thinks it's so sacrosanct. And Bill says it's not science. It's not the law of gravity. I, I just, all right, good stuff. Thanks for sending this to me. Again, if you see articles like this you want me to read, man, by all means, send them.